Uh, this is a continuation of a project that we started last year, really focusing on looking at what are some of the herbicides that we might use and trying to incorporate red clover back into our wheat rotations. As many of you know, many of our spring applied herbicides, we have a hard time putting uh, red clover in there, right? There's just nothing that really gives us much, um, I guess, where red clover can tolerate it. The only thing that we really do have that's labeled is MCPA. And as most of us know, that's kind of weak on a lot of weeds. So we're trying a lot of different things. One of the things that uh, we started working on a few years back was looking at some fall herbicide applications, really in particular to look at trying to control some of these uh, winter grasses, these things like um, wind grass, common wind grass, which is starting to show up more and more in some of our wheat fields, um, particularly up in the thumb region, but we're seeing it spread a little bit more. And a few years ago, we did some work with that, and we found that you know things like PowerFlex and Osprey applied in the fall provided us really good control. So we thought, well, okay, you know that works. We had some pretty decent weed control. What can we do with some of these fall applications? And is there any benefit to these fall applications in trying to incorporate red clover back into our uh, our wheat rotation with some of these frost seeded um, red clover applications? So the study directly behind me, we can walk through. Um, this is one where we're looking at, again, that red clover tolerance. We've got fall applied herbicides. We also have spring applied herbicides. I think I'm good. Is she good? Okay. Really? Oh, you're loud. <laughs> I'm going to leave this for you. To okay. Yeah, you just throw it down there. <laughs> So we have fall applied, spring applied, um, and again, frost seeded clover. Uh, this wheat back here was planted on September 26th, so early, okay? So this is some of the earliest wheat that was planted on this farm. Um, our fall applications went on when the wheat was about at that two leaf stage, probably about, what do you say, Gary, about, mm, yeah, about that size, four inches, about maybe. four inches. So that's when the fall applications went on. We have various of those and we'll walk through those. Our spring applications went on April 28th and the uh, clover was frost seeded on March 18th. So those are kind of some of the dates to, to work with. And we'll spend a little time walking down through this. Um, I'm also gonna mention a couple other studies that we have going on. Um, we're not gonna see them, but if anybody is interested in looking at um, some other weed control trials, if you look over there, you're gonna see some signs almost right up on Jolly Road. So if anybody afterwards wants to go, many of those uh, uh, plots are signed, basically looking at weed control from a new herbicide called Quailix, which is probably gonna be registered maybe in, maybe next year, maybe the following year, that's being uh, marketed by Dow. It's a, a pre-mixture of two different herbicide active ingredients. Um, and those active ingredients are ones that we don't use in Michigan right now. Okay, so um, we've got that one. Uh, wide matches up there, Husky, also PowerFlex. The main point of that study is also to look at um, kind of the replant of soybeans because sometimes we get into issues where herbicides been applied, um, maybe we lose the wheat crop or maybe somebody wants to try to double crop some beans. So we're looking at replanting soybeans after that wheat is harvested just to see if there are any issues from um, uh, carryover. Many of the rotation restrictions on some of those herbicides are actually four months or five months. So we're kind of looking at this new uh, herbicide to see if that can be shorter and how that's actually affected up in this environment. So that's a little bit about that trial. And that one was actually planted on October 10th. And then down here at the end, as you start walking and probably when the wagons pick you up, you're gonna see a lot of lambs quarter through some wheat. That wheat was planted October 31st. We also spread some more weed seeds. Last year we had a lot of issues with holes where we had weeds and we had pre-harvest treatments that needed to go on. Uh, we did a couple strips last year where we looked at um, various treatments that are um, registered for wheat. Things like Roundup, Clarity, 240. We looked at AIM. Um, one of the things we did with those strip trials <clears throat> is when we harvested them, we looked at uh, the foreign uh, material that was in those samples, what the moisture was, what the test weights were, and there were some differences. And again, we just did unreplicated strips. 
this year we're going to replicate it and one of the things we wanted to make sure that we had was weeds i think we've got good weed pressure in there so we'll be able to see um, how well some of these pre-harvest treatments work on uh, the lambs quarter control as well as how it affects the wheat as far as test weight and so forth does anybody have any questions on some of the work that we're doing in wheat all right well, let's take a few minutes and we'll spend some time looking at some of these different treatments. <clears throat> so the first set of treatments are our fall applications. Feel free to take a look and uh, pull back and see if you see any clover. Many of our fall applications, um, the clover has survived. So that's good. So that's maybe one way to incorporate it. So we've got Affinity Broad Spec. Uh, we've looked at that for two years now in the fall. Uh, it's done a pretty good job. We actually saw last year a little bit of lamb's quarter control, which surprised me. Um, we'll know a little bit more after the wheat's harvested. We've got a pretty good wheat stand here. Once that wheat's harvested, that clover will take off, but there is some pretty good stand of clover in there. Yes. Uh, and if we see the clover, how much clover did you put on in the spring? Um, this year, I think we put 10 pounds Okay, 12 to 14, yep. I know last year we used about 10, so kind of in that 10 to 15 pound range. <laughs> so we have clover that's tolerated there. Husky, also again, fall application. Good wheat tolerance with all of our fall, fall applied um, treatments. So didn't see any issues with crop injury from our fall applications. Um, we've got uh, clover that's uh, remaining in here. Again, we'll see how well these things take off once the wheat's harvested. Osprey, which is more of a grass herbicide. Again, we've had really good luck for control of common wind grass. Um, we do have clover in here. Last year we did see um, a slight reduction in the number of plants, but again, it still was able to tolerate it. May not be 100%, but we still have some good clover growth in there. Power Flex. Um, this one is an ALS inhibitor. Again, good on common wind grass. It's also been very good on a lot of our uh, annual broadleaves, particularly with the uh, summer or spring applications, um, pretty good on common chickweed. So we've had pretty good luck with this herbicide. And then one thing I've noticed, the clover looks a little set back here, but again, we'll see a little bit better once uh, the wheat's harvested. Trying a little bit of applications of clarity in the fall, basically uh, a quarter of a pint. Uh, the wheat looks pretty good, the clover is surviving. Again, many of these fall applications were able to have that clover seeded in the spring. Okay, now the interesting thing is, so many years, 240 is not labeled for a fall application. A lot of pe times people try to get away with it. And this is one year where you would not have gotten away with it. So we put this in here as kind of why you don't put 240 on your wheat in the fall. Um, one of the things that was interesting in the spring, um, when we first came out here to spray the uh, spring treatments, basically it looked greener, right Gary? It looked dark green, like we had a lot better, higher quality. Yep. It's like, wow, this is, this is our best plot. Well, a week dark. later, you show up, basically the leaves are standing straight up, kind of twisted, and it just went downhill from there. So again, do not use 240 in the fall. Um, well, it'll be interesting to see what kind of uh, yield we actually get on this wheat. So um, the clover survived, but again, this is not something you'd want to do. We did put MCPA on in the fall. Again, just kind of to pair up these treatments. Um, probably one that you would not use in the fall, but again, good clover tolerance. Here's our untreated, if anybody wants to look. Um, like I said, we had a pretty early planting, so a lot of our wheat growth has done a good job of suppressing a lot of the annual weeds. Okay, so we do have some lambs quarters out here, but they're pretty small because the wheat has done a really good job of shading them out. It's all the same variety of wheat on yes, 
Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention, this is all sunburst, it's a soft red wheat. Right here, this is the start of all of our spring treatments. Um, Affinity Broad Spec, again, uh, usually pretty good on chickweed, a lot of our summer annual weeds. Uh, one of the questions that um, I've gotten some calls on this year is I've had some growers call and say, hey, I've got mare's tail coming up through my wheat, okay? Mare's tail, horseweed, whatever you want to call it, we've got a lot of it that is ALS resistant. So those are things you need to keep in mind. So if you know that you have horseweed that could potentially be an issue in your wheat, um, Affinity Broad Spec alone is probably not going to be a good thing. You could take mix it with some 2,4-D, maybe use some Husky or do something different because again, we're looking at two ALS inhibitors that are not going to control ALS resistant horseweed. <clears throat> Husky, oh, and with the clover, these spring applications um, have generally killed the clover, okay? So any of these ones right here, you look, you're going to see pretty much no clover. There might be a few plants that survive, but th this is not where your clover is going to um, make it. Husky does a pretty good job on weed control. Again, we're going to take everything to yield. Osprey, as I mentioned, is more of a grass herbicide. So you can see just from the front, there is some chickweed that wasn't controlled. It's not labeled to control chickweed, but um, again, these are one of the, the products that we were looking at. Powerflex, also again, um, spring applications kill the clover. <clears throat> Here's our spring applied clarity and our spring applied 2,4-D. No issues with crop tolerance, look good. Um, in general, we've had very good luck with using these in the spring. Just remember that there are certain limits on when you can apply many of these herbicides. So, um, you know, most of these were applied at feet stage five, you get up to six, that's the cutoff for a lot of these different herbicides, in particular the growth regulator herbicides like clarity and 2,4-D. We have MCPA here in the spring. Again, the clover survives. That's the one that is labeled to where uh, clover will tolerate MCPA applications. But again, it's a little weak on some of the other weeds that we have. For example, chickweed, a lot of those. So it's, you know, it's okay on lamb's quarters, but some of the winter annuals that we have problems with, it's not gonna be very good. So one of the things that we try doing is looking at like affinity broad spec to control some of those winter annual weeds in the fall and then <coughs> excuse me come back with mcpa in the spring so your clover is able to survive and hopefully able to get all the weed control because we're getting control of some of those summer annuals with the mcpa and the winter annuals with the fall application so we've got this treatment and then a husky followed by mcpa in the spring and again, the clover looks really good in both of those treatments. <clears throat> so um, in general, kind of looking at potential ways to integrate it, uh, red clover back into um, some of these wheat crops are probably our best way is with some of the fall applied herbicides or possibly a fall applied coming back with MCPA or if you're, you know, if you got a good stand, a lot of times that does a lot for weed control. Again, so these are planted, you know, fairly early, September uh, 26. So we've got, you know, really good wheat crop out here. If you look down there at the end, you can see the lamb's quarter coming up. That would have been an October 31st planting. So just a major difference in um, how much the crop grows and how much weed suppression we actually have. So, I think I have some time for some questions. I don't know. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the winter annuals, 
Do they get germinated early in the fall or do they drag on clear into November? Um, most times our winter annuals are probably going to be coming up most of October. We start cooling down in November, so a lot of times we're not going to see a lot of new emergence. Uh, there might be a few, the but... The guy I talked to said, talked about using Sharpen before the wheat emerged. Would that work? Um, you can use Sharpen before the wheat emerges as far as a, a burn down. Right. Um, it does provide a little bit of residual control of things like mare's tail. It may not be as good on all the other winter annual weeds that you have. So there are some, you know, some people that are using Sharpen and um, glyphosate as kind of a burn down and then planting wheat. So it's more or less trying to control the stuff that's out there. Have you done much with peak at all? Or? Um, we, we've had trials that have had peak in them. Peak's one of those ones that's been, you know, I, I know it's used a little bit in different areas, but one of the issues that we've always run into is the potential for uh, carryover to, uh, with the soybeans. So that's, that's one where, you know, I, we've done some stuff. But again, it's an ALS inhibitor, so depending on what weeds you have, so. I understand underseed all our wheat with alfalfa instead of clover. Is alfalfa more tolerant or less tolerant in some of these, some of these chemistries? Or? Uh, that's a good question. Um, the, one, the one good thing about alfalfa is in many of our rotational tables, we do have kind of a listing on alfalfa probably will be about the same tolerance level. And again, with some of these, they break down fairly quickly, so we wouldn't have too much of an issue, but we do have the rotation table in the back and we do have alfalfa listed for many of those different herbicides that we use in wheat. Any other questions that we might have? Is, Anybody? Is husky better on mayor's tail then, than affinity? You said that was weak on it. If you have a mayor's tail issue, if you have a mare's tail issue, if it's ALS resistant, affinity is not going to touch it. Husky, Husky yeah, it's going to be okay. okay. And when was the fall application? Two weeks after the wheat was planted? The fall application was actually about four weeks. The planting date on your little sheet, it should be September 26th. And then I think October 20... Oh, I have it right in front of me. October 23rd, so about four weeks. You're gonna, want, you're gonna want the wheat up. Yeah, you want the wheat. You want at least two leaf on the wheat. Okay. Yep. Yeah, the fall applications for any of these herbicides need to be when the wheat is up. So does, does the heat unit or temperature okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> later on in the fall as it's beginning to cool down for the effectiveness of these herbicides uh, like where, where would be your cutoff date as far as being able to put a fall applied on right in order for the herbicide to be effective and it's killing usually we're we usually kind of say that 50 degree mark okay. is kind of where we're at That's and true. many times we sometimes when we got those nice falls it'll be I mean we've made some applications into the first or second week of November so 50 degree daytime yeah yep. okay. so well, thank you.